I mean, there's a division going on right now in the modern state of the world. You're either going to be a part of the side that prospers and is able to afford even groceries, or you're going to be in poverty depending on the people that have all the money. It's like prioritizing what you do with your time, your habits that you have in place, the systems to achieve your goals is how you're really going to take advantage of the time that you have. What can I fit into this slot that's going to benefit me with the vision in mind? You got to be intentional with the content that you watch. I agree. That build you up. Yeah. When we create this plan and the vision for how we want our life to turn out, we have to filter every single thing that we decide to do through, is this benefiting the plan? Is this moving me forward in this plan? Is this dollar going towards it or taking away? Right. Is this hour going towards it or taking away? Right. Yeah. People try to put us to death. Talking about my generation. My generation. Welcome to the TLT Movement Podcast, a podcast for tomorrow's leaders today. In this episode, I got my good friend Josh Bider here (laughs) yet again for another episode, part one in the description below, highly recommend. But in the first episode, we talked about relationships and habits, and it's part of this four categorical, how would you explain it? Part of your identity? the, the, The thought process behind identity was, you know, being able to break down the categories of life that we deal with every day. And so... Uh, the four different categories that just came to mind were relationships, health, physical and mental health, finances, and hobbies. And so originally, like you said, the first podcast, we were kind of talking about the habits, you know, how we how we kind of manage our relationships and how habits are a fundamental ground for us to be able to kind of branch out into the lifestyle that we that we aim for. And then the lifestyle that we aim for determines the people we surround ourselves with. And it's all just this process of kind of passing around energy, especially uplifting energy. Right. And ongoing from that, I mean, a lot of life has happened since we last, you know, got together and talked about anything. And even thinking about the next step in this conversation being, you know, finances and hobbies or more than hobbies, free time. Sure. Looking at that like free time, right? And so when I think about finances, I think about budgeting and I think about how we're all challenged, especially in today's day of age with how hard things are with how in a sense demanding work is just to make me end budgeting. It's like a skill set that is very overlooked and yet very much needed. I know for me, I'm just now at 23 getting in control. And it's like, I've let go long enough to where I have to recuperate now and I have to structure and I have to kind of flip from the negative and start thinking positive. Right. As far and as financially. Financially. Well, yeah, yeah, yeah. I mean, even in the idea of, of my free time, if we're talking about budgeting finances, how much more is our time? Right. right? We're spending money in, in exchange, in trade, whether it's food, whether it's entertainment, whether it's for a vehicle, a house, we're exchanging. When we're spending our time, of course, it's an exchange, but we're not getting something necessarily material back for the time. We, we do trade our time for do. money. We do. Usually, I, I think a lot of people when they work their employees and it's, it's on an hourly rate. We're all given the equal amount of time of 168 hours a week, whether you're Elon Musk, Jeff Bezos, or the guy flipping burgers at Five Guys, or the guy selling phones at T-Mobile's, or doing DoorDash. Everybody's given the same amount of time to budget. Everybody's got their ideals, right? We all want the family or the house or the location, but the in-betweens is where it really becomes unique and personal. And so in pursuit of those things, being in recognition of what an hour to hour basis looks like. Right. And being able to set yourself up for success according to the vision. It's like, if we don't even pay attention, how are we going to know what we want, the direction we're heading and the steps we're taking to get there? We all have these dreams. As you mentioned, the house, maybe the property, the kids, all the stuff that we want to accomplish, all these things that we would like to do, these places we'd like to go, they're dreams. Mm -hmm. They don't become obtainable goals until we have that plan in place. And so what you're talking about is kind of being smart with your time so that you can budget out to actually obtain these goals and and get this plan. And I think that this is so critical right now in the U S I mean, I heard a a statistic that was 75% of Americans are paycheck to paycheck. We are over a trillion dollars in credit card debt. I've noticed how I've made a pretty plateaued amount over the past couple of years and i'm feeling stretched because the dollars were so much less everything's so much more expensive a couple years ago i was making good cash now i'm i'm feeling 
stressed out. And it's, uh, I think everybody's feeling this. Not only young people like us, but grown adults that I've known, that I've known my whole life to have, well, honey, they live in big, nice homes. And I'm talking to them and they're like, yeah, we're living off our savings right now. I mean, my my paycheck is not covering the bills. And I, I'm blown away. It's it's unreal. And so it's the perfect time to start to budget and figure out where's time slipping by in our days, playing mm. video games, watching a movie, stuff that's fun. <laughs> <laughs> stuff that's not bad either. It's, yeah, it's not, it's not bad, but we we're finding that we're all of us, all of our friends, we're like, all right, how do we get a third job like how, or a third income stream here? Like, But that's the thing that's clicking in people these days. It's the time management. It's the realization right. that I have an opportunity in front of me to really take control here. I mean, there's a division going on right now in the modern state of the world. You're either going to be a part of the side that prospers and is able to afford even groceries, or you're going to be in poverty depending on the people that have all the money it's like the middle class no is getting cut class. right it's getting cut it, more and more every single year and, and i'm feeling it this year heavily understanding that if if time really is a tool yet can oppose us at the same time like if we allow it to be our our restraint then we're not going to use time as the biggest tool we have i mean i would say time and money are the biggest resources right but the one that will never be able to kind of keep in this ongoing cycle of of revenue, I think of like a rain, right? It's pulled up, it's put down, it's pulled up. We can't do that with our time. We're only putting it out and we're only progressing and we're only getting older. And every year, it, I've noticed it gets a little faster. I'm like, oh my gosh, it's already the 20th? That's, that, for real. I'm I'm like, thinking, I've been thinking that since I was like 20 years old. I would wake <laughs> up and I'd be like, wait a minute. Like it's already been a month since then. And it's like time <laughs> yeah. is, is, it's speeding up, right? Like right. look at a hamster wheel effect. It's uh, all of a sudden you you find yourself in this flow of, of time. And that's why prioritizing what you do with your time, your habits that you have in place, the systems to achieve your goals is how you're really going to take advantage of the time that you have. How I like to think of why time moves faster because I I think about this stuff. I'm like, why is that the case? I realized when we're eight years old, a year, a whole year, it's one eighth of our entire lives. So, or we became cognizant around maybe like four. So it's it's 25% of the life that we've lived. So to us, each day seems very long. And now that we're, you're 22? 23. 23, I'm 24. We're now, every year is now 1 24th of our life. It's getting fractional. And so it just seems to be flying by. And so what have you been doing to make some extra cash now that time's flying by, money's getting tight? What have you been doing to kind of supplement it? Finding myself with all these hours in the afternoon... I'm, I'm stuck looking in the mirror thinking with the gifts and talents and with the abilities that I have, how can I really maximize my lifestyle? So I've incorporated gym, right? I've been able to really take control of wanting to be passionate about physical health. Yeah, that's been one when it comes to making more money, even flicking on DoorDash and being able to think, okay, like I got an hour right now, I can either read, I can play a game. You know, I, it's Fortnite, whether it's 2K, whatever it is. I, you know, let, like, let's be honest. I mean, it's, these things are fun. But looking at an hour on the plate, what can I fit into this slot that's going to benefit me with the vision in mind? Right. So DoorDash, not that it's sustainable or, yeah, the wear and tear on the car and gas and it's going back and forth. But it's the effort in and of alone that's proving out, like, I want to really take control of the time. So with DoorDash, bringing in an extra... 100 bucks, 200 bucks, 300 bucks a week. Based How on. long have you been doing this for? Because I've been doing it for like a couple of weeks now. Yeah, DoorDash currently was a couple of weeks. But when I was in between jobs in 2021, I did it for four, three and a half, four months to live off of DoorDash. Wow. I mean, and I was doing it in slots, right? Like, think about it. Wherever yeah, yeah. you're at in those restaurants, people eat lunch between 11 and 2. Yeah. People eat dinner between 5 and 8. So, you you know, you flick it on there, you go those slot hours, you kind of give yourself time in between. I used to do DoorDash and I loved it. I stopped doing it since I've gotten here just because I can edit and I can do other stuff and make more. But I liked it because it was a dual opportunity to spend my time because I could, yes, uh, drive and make some cash, but I could also play a book. I could also listen to a podcast and be educating or myself. Some music. Yeah. <laughs> or some tunes. Yeah. But in 2020, when I was doing this a good bit in those time slots, 
just to make some extra cash and because I enjoy to drive. I felt like that year that I drove to Hardash, I made a good amount of cash. Every single week I was making like six, seven hundred bucks. And man, I was learning so much. I felt like I learned more than when I was in my senior year of high school. One of the things that I, I thought could be positive to replace video games, right? So yeah. I was thinking take out video games, you know, think grind mode, really like let's put in the how can I create more money? Whether it's DoorDash or a new trend that, I mean, even a lot of you guys are on is really taking the advantage of the internet, being able to maximize yes. on that. So, so what he's referring to right now is I started doing this thing with a couple of our bodies where we were scrolling through YouTube shorts and Instagram reels. I don't do Instagram so much or TikTok at all, but YouTube, YouTube shorts, shorts gets me. Yeah, I'm like, me it, it's <laughs> so, it sucks me in and I enjoy it. It's a good like way to wind down and entertain myself, but I was feeling that, that pressure of like, man, I'm wasting time doing this. That's crazy. I would check my little time. I'm like, oh my gosh, I spent two hours on YouTube. Like, that's crazy. And so what I decided, I'm like, I'm going to make some shorts and I'm going to do it by, so I love comedy and I love to laugh and get that just kind of like pressure valve release to, uh, to have a fun time and laugh. And so I'm like, man, I got to cut out comedy. I got to cut it out because this is not a good use of my time. And so then I was like, wait a second. Or I could start making YouTube shorts every single day of just the comedy, the stand up I watch, skits I watch, uh, podcasts. I could just chop up little clips. I already know how to do all this stuff and maybe I can make some passive income. So far, no incomes come from it, <laughs> but from my research, it's like exponential growth if your channel actually gains some traction. Yeah, it's like planning views. a scene. Yeah, apparently you can make $100 per million views on shorts. And so there's a lot of accounts out there. There's this one account that I've been studying. I'm figuring out what the heck is this guy doing? All he does is he explains what's about to happen and then plays the clip. So he goes, this guy did this and then plays the guy doing that. And this guy has had this channel since April of 2023. He's amassed 2.6 million subscribers and 5 billion views. This kid's voice, he sounds like he's 15. 5 billion views equals out to roughly $500,000 this guy made last year. Yeah. Off of YouTube shorts, not a single, he didn't show his face. It's, it's just clips that he found. Yeah. I find this to be so intriguing. And if you scroll through YouTube shorts or Instagram reels, notice how much of the content is actually original for, from that creator or how much is it just reposted with some text on top and some pictures that's hide in. Yeah, yeah. Most of it, 85% of the content is just reposted, edited to keep your attention. And I find this to be very, very intriguing in a fun hobby that can result in financial residual income. Yeah, and I see that within that, you're really maximizing your skill sets, your time, because like you said, you know, if, it, if it's stuff you're already engaged in, right. how can you, you know, benefit off of the it? The most American thing I've <laughs> ever <laughs> If we're already doing it, why not make money doing it? <laughs> well, I mean, with the right plan in place and with the right motivation, you know, you can maximize what you're already engaged in to benefit those things. Right. I mean, of course, you know, personally speaking, you should always, you know, check the spirit first, you know, like, Father God, I would like to do this thing. You know, if I step into it, are you with me? You know, should I not do this thing? So taking that time to prayer for me personally is always, you know, it's rooted out a lot of things that I could waste time with. I mean, and I had the thought process while you were talking about music and about how even if we're caught up in something like YouTube shorts, you can refine what it is that you're spending your time doing on it. So if you notice something is like not necessarily beneficial, not that you need to chop off the whole YouTube shorts, but that you can refine the time of what you're watching, right? Maybe sure. add something that's more of like fitness or, or financial or biblical, something like that where you're actually benefiting off of the time you're spending. And let... YouTube be a tool that you use, not let YouTube use, use you. you. Yeah. Looking at everything in life with the the mindset of our phone is a tool. Is it going to use us or are we going to use it? Right. And this is exactly why I'm, I host this podcast because I feel like the TLT values and the conversations that we have on the show are so important. And I really try with each episode to make it entertaining and interesting, educational, motivational, encouraging, 
family yeah. friendly so that these young adults have something to listen to that's not this substance, garbage real that has substance. some substance in it that they feel like they're learning something. They feel like they gain something. I want TLT and these values that we promote on here to hit the mainstream and maybe we can encourage some kids to listen to something that's not garbage. I mean, so many of these streamers, so many of these, the the entertainment that the kids watch it's not life promoting. No, it's nonsense. It's nonsense. it's nonsense. It's stupid. It's like dumbing you down. And you got to be intentional with the content that you watch. I agree. That build you up. Yeah. And that might even be having to kind of step out of the comfort zone and stop doing what's that instant dopamine hit and maybe start to pivot and search out what you were just talking about. Some of the fitness stuff, some mm-hmm. of the health stuff, the motivation. Aligned with the vision. Create a vision. With align vision. yourself with the vision. Yes. <laughs> and, when we create this plan and the vision for how we want our life to turn out, we have to filter every single thing that we decide to do through, is this benefiting the plan? Is this moving me forward in this plan? Is this dollar going towards it or taking away? Right. Is this hour going towards it or taking away? Right. Yeah. And so decide what you want. Decide in every facet of your life, kind of like the topics that we talked about on the show as far as your financial goals your spiritual goals, mm. your family time goals, your friends, fitness, fitness, health. I mean, it's like make a game plan and then everything you do go, is this benefiting the plan? I mean, I so agree. And I'm one that's like super written out or, or structured in a journal. And so like, if you're like that, I know you're like that. Oh yeah. Right. Being able to get face to face with it down on paper like, think about it. Even if you have to do it in a weekly layout where you have Monday through Sunday or whatever your weekdays are that you're working, and then you write down your hours, even take advantage of the calendar you have on your phone, your mm-hmm. iPad, and then co- compartmentalize. Fill your slots with what you would do for a week. Realize all the free time, right? Rearrange some things, put some new things in there, right? And and really start to head towards the vision. And, and, and if vision is kind of this huge idea where it's like, oh, I don't know end goal. It's so far. We don't know the, where we're heading and all these things. Sure. Right? Okay. Think about where you want to be in six months from now or, or do a season three months from now. Right. Right? Where, where are you at in a three-month version of yourself? Of course, there's a 10-year plan. There's a five-year plan. There's a one-year plan. I personally live on a weekly basis from Sabbath to Sabbath. Mm-hmm. I like to kind of see my week out because it's tangible. So that's why I say three-month Right, if you're a, a visionary or a dreamer, or you're a goal setter. Th- you know what you can do to your physical body and fitness in three months. You know what you can become educated with on a program in mm-hmm. three months. You know a new skill set. You're trained in a job in two weeks. Right. You know how many training jobs you could go through in your own study time to be able to pick up new skill sets and then utilize those. But you know the complacency of of just getting by is enough, and, and especially with where we see the division of the rich and the poor, it's like almost, will I ever be there? Can I ever get there? So are my efforts even worth it? And then there's this negative self-talk that comes in and it's like, no, get the vision down, define, well, okay, define your vision, get it down, structure a weekly schedule that you'll execute for three months, 90 days, and then do it. Don't let anybody stop you from doing it. Obviously, don't be obsessive to the point to where you're harming yourself sure. in this routine. It's like, I'm not, I'm only sleeping for two hours a day. So I'm <laughs> taking advantage of every night. No, like right, 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 think right. about what's healthy, what's not healthy, get structured and attack it. I mean, now is the time I'm always thinking big picture. What's my part in it all? How am I contributing into the earth, into my city, into the country, into my friend group, into my family, into my bank account, right back to myself. What am I giving to God? And it's like, wow, you can really start to find purpose in every day, hour to hour lifestyle living. And when you think hour to hour, you start to think minute to minute. And then you're like in this in this kind of self-reflection of like everything is intentional. Even when I'm not doing anything, it's intentional. It should be intentional. I mean, align yourself with purpose, right? Purpose, I believe, is only found through God. So get connected if you're not connected. But if you're struggling with faith, you know, figure out your strength and weaknesses and then build a plan, find yourself in a flow and, you know, don't be afraid to pray. Welcome him in, you know, admit where you're at and uh, and just 
give it all you got. You know, don't let anything stop you from putting everything you got out on the table. Because often what I'm noticing in myself is that it's always a, I should have, I could have, I would have, I mm. didn't, I need to, I want to, I'll do it next time. The next time approaches and it's, now it's game time, but it doesn't always like work like that. You know, we, we get, we get tired, we get caught up, we get distracted. So it's like minute to minute, hour to hour, build a plan, attack it, you know, let people in your life know what you're doing to be held accountable. Right. Like I'm, I live with my cousin Tiago right now. And he's a mastermind with business. He's went from nothing to something and he's running a company. He flipped that company from negative to double positive, going crazy with it. And so I'm, and he said to me, he verbalized to me, he was like, don't be afraid to use my mind as a resource for you and your financial life. And it clicked. I was like, I was like, this is so true. I, I sat down with him. We laid out my entire budget plan, all the finances. I let him know where I'm heading. I call him. I'm like, yo, I'm thinking about getting a cheeseburger right now. Like, you know, it's only 15. Uh, well, does it fit the game plan? Is it a part of the vision? Or you got the groceries, even if it's not a burger? Like, and, and that by spreading it with the people in my life, they are aware of where I'm heading, accountability. And then there's the sequence of love between whoever's involved. I mean, uh, with love being the center of the relationship aspect going back to the last podcast, right? Like if love really is the goal and we're supposed to be connected to each other and supporting each other, lifting each other up, we have to be real with each other about where we're at, what we want, where we're going, what we're struggling with, you know, get connected, get plugged in, be filled and then attack the personal game plan. Like I'm fired up about it. Dude. <laughs> I love I'm, it, dude. I'm I love up. it. Um, Cause love it's so it. true because uh, again, the word complacency is a pretty heavy topic in my head in this last week because everyone is just going with the flow. Everyone is like waiting for something to happen where we need to make something happen. In a sense, we need to make something from nothing. We need to defy all odds that are coming against us as young people, whether it's fear of being able to provide, whether it's physical doubt in yourself, whether it's uh, stress or anxiety or bad family situation, block it all out. Come face to face with yourself. Become the person you want to be. The best way to predict the future is to create it. And that goes for the big picture and it goes for the little one too. I want to share a practical tip of exactly what works for me that I've refined over Let's the share. years as far as scheduling goes. And I just got this down this past couple of months, but it's so good. Similar to what you just said, but I'm going to go into the exact apps I use, all that stuff. So I use the Apple Notes app and I do the to-do list for the entire week. I write down everything that I need to do as far as video projects, as far as yeah. personal stuff. I know. And then I go day by day and go, okay, if I could have the ideal day, what would I accomplish in, in mm. each day? What's obtainable? What's That's a like great question actually ask. doable? I write it all down looking at the overall big picture of what I need to accomplish this week. And I go, okay, uh, yeah, Tuesday can be the day that I go out and do the dry cleaning in the post office and all this stuff. And I can do a block of a couple hours to do all this stuff. But every other day I need to be working on this, 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 and this. And then I go into the Apple um, calendar and I do hour by hour, minute by minute, exactly what needs to get done, putting in there rest, putting in there eating, everything, and then following that to the T. And I got to tell you, when you do exactly what you say you're going to do, the confidence, the self-confidence starts accumulating and building oh, yeah. because you start trusting yourself when you say you're going to do. And that's what integrity is. It's, it's being the same person in the dark and in the light. It's doing what you say that you're going to do. It's not being double minded and it not only builds your reputation, but it also builds your self-confidence. Like you said, when you're doing these things consistently, it's like sustainable energy. You're fueling yourself to keep doing the things that you know you should be doing even when it's hard because you're doing them. Right. So you, you get yourself found in this loop of wanting to do it because you know the reward is going to be the energy that you need to do it again. And it's, it's like the, I think of the gym, right? Like right. I was not a big gym goer for 22 years of my life. And then all of a sudden I'm – doing it a little bit and then a little bit turns into weekly, weekly, monthly, sure, some time on and off here and there. But then now having a structure like Sunday through Friday routine and it's wow, like I'm excited to get in there. It went from not right. wanting to to now like not driving fast enough to get there. 
I notice the more I do, the more energy that I have. And the less I do, the more groggy and kind of draggy I am. If I sleep in and I, I wake up and I scroll through my phone and then I kind of drag myself out of bed and do this because I have to. It's like the energy is down all day long. Yeah. When I get up real early at the crack of dawn, go do go do the run, go do the Bible study, go to the gym, come back and eat. And it's not even daylight yet. It's like, (laughs) dude, that feels so good. Like I'm, it's now the adrenaline rush is chasing. Okay. Can I actually accomplish everything on this list for today? Let's go. Let's Let's, go. Let's do it. I mean, that's a great point. Being able to create more time for yourself. Yeah. We have a set amount of time. So it's like, okay, right. How can I redeem my time in a sense? Right. Right. So, you know, I think about my week and where I could give myself more opportunity to do better things and, and where I can give myself more time. So, you know, it's just a beautiful thing to be able to, to reflect and to realize like, whoa, I can make a shift here and it would benefit me, you know? So did this episode was about hobbies and finance. We talked a lot about finance and these personal goals and stuff, but I, I don't know about you guys. I feel like if we can turn our hobbies into something that benefits us, not only relaxation wise and for fun, but can benefit us financially as well. I think that that's, that's really cool. And I know a lot of people our age, I talk to them, they love playing the video games and they'll play like a lot. And I'll go, Hey man, you should just stream, stream it. You should just stream it. And they're like, ah, I don't want to turn something that I like into a job. And I'm like, dude, you're thinking about it all wrong. Like, Imagine you're doing weight at that point, right? It becomes a responsibility to have fun. (laughs) And I'm like, no, you think about it all wrong. Like, like think about how much more fun it would be if you're doing the exact same thing that you're doing, but then somebody donates some money to you for doing it. And you got a live feed and people are talking and you're doing good. And yeah, It, it could be fun too. Like it's all mindset. And so if you've got the mindset that I think is a, is a fallacy of, oh, I don't want to turn something that I do for fun into a job. Don't turn it into a job. Just turn it into something that makes some finances. Like you're you're thinking about a job all wrong, I think. It all boils down to free time and what we do with our free time and how if we look at the free time that we do have by getting real with ourselves, uh, maybe even in a written down version, you'll notice the free time you do have and then implement some new ideas, right? Get some get some counsel from some people, read some books and and fill in those slots with things that are aligned with the vision. Because I know for me, I'm undergoing changes. I'm experiencing evaluation on my time that's enabling me to be more of an asset to everything around me. Mm. Right? And, and it, it's like the law of reciprocation. I think of what you put in is what you're going to get out. Yes, that and goes so, for everything, including your life. And again, it's a little cliche, but if you're into video games... I, I used to be into it as, as a kid. The grind of that is real. You'll sit there and you'll kill the same mob over and over again to get the gold or whatever you need. Yeah. <laughs> just or t- just use that same skill in real life. Like, just like go, all right, what can I grind out? Because like when you're in hour three of grinding like that in a game, it's not fun necessarily. I mean, you could... Why? Why you're you doing get it to achieve what you yeah. originally had in mind? Get yes, yeah. in the game that's yeah. that articulates into nothing. Yeah, do it in real life where it actually matters. Like, yeah. I don't know. That's just my humble opinion, but yeah. I think it's, I think it's a mindset that can benefit you if you just shift the thought process over. Maximizing the most of the time that we have, being able to use it to produce income, take care of others, to to build relationships, build relationship to get healthy, to get strong. Let's hit the fast forward button and get there. You know what I mean? (laughs) I'm trying to get there. (laughs) Hey, I I think, I think we're all trying to get there. Hey, Josh, do you have anything else to leave with our audience that you didn't say? Let's just keep on keeping on. (laughs) Let's just keep (laughs) on keeping on. (laughs) With intention. With intention in everything we do all the time, always. Hey, thanks for tuning in, Josh. Thank you for being a part of the show. You are definitely, I don't know why, but when we were on an episode together, I never stutter. It's very relaxed. I have fun. And I feel like we gave a lot of really good, useful, tangible info today. So hopefully the TLT enjoyed it and likes and subscribes. Let's go. And also rates us on Spotify and Apple. (laughs) Let's go viral. 2024. All right. right. 
Thank you so much for tuning in to the TLT Movement Podcast. If you like what you heard, maybe it will bring somebody else in your life value too. So please share with a friend, subscribe to our YouTube, and comment and let us know what you think. Our podcast is available on Spotify and Apple, and we would very much appreciate a five-star review. Visit our site, tltmovement.com. 